Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are God's Remnant at God's Church of Love online. And we invite you to listen to our message and see what the Lord has to say for today. God bless you. Right now, we're going to read from Luke chapter 12. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And who See, a lot of times, you know, we don't realize in these last days, God is going to give us spontaneous, I mean, spontaneous anointing as to how to witness, how to minister, how to encourage, how to exhort, and how to correct. He will teach us what we shall say. So we have to be ready instant in season and instant out of season for God to use us. And we have to be very careful about where our hearts are. We have to be careful about what our lives are about. At any given moment, God can call on you to witness. God can call on you to minister. You hear me? Verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you by taking thought or worrying mm -hmm, can add to his stature one cubit? You can't grow an inch or a foot by worrying. <laughs> if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? If you can't handle this, then why are you worrying about that? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have needed these things, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about with your lights burning. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Amen. Listen. <laughs> I really thank God for this group. I really thank God for you all because I really do believe that your hearts lean more toward the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Your hearts lean more to serving God, to serving people. And you want to do it out of a pure heart. And that is always a blessing. Y'all pray for me because I'm really having an issue trying to figure out if I'm on target or not. So I ask you to seek God that much more. Seek God and don't be afraid to take chances, especially if you're doing it by faith. 
God cannot steer a car that's sitting still. When you're seeking God for direction, when you're seeking God to bless you as you want to be a blessing to his people, you have to be in motion. Move forward like Abraham did when God told him, leave your father's house and your father's country. Leave all of that behind and go to a place that I will lead you to. Well, he had to put one foot in front of the other, even though he did it, not knowing where he was going. So by faith, whatever you do, let it be by faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God, no matter what you do. So whatever you do, it's got to be by faith. You got to be trusting God. Listen, if I put the pedal to the metal and I drive a car, I am trusting that that car is going to get me where I've got to go, right? But the first thing I have to do is turn on the ignition. Then the car starts. Then while it's idling, I have to put it in gear. Now I'm either going to back up to position myself to go forward or I'm already positioned to go forward and I can put it in drive. But either way, I have to get that car ready to move forward. Then I have to put my foot on the gas and make sure the coast is clear so that I can move forward safely. And as I move forward, I'm also praying that God will give me traveling mercies so I'm covered on all ends. Now, if I'm driving down the street and I'm following directions, but somehow the directions are faulty and I make a wrong turn and I turn left instead of right, or I go down an extra block and turn right one block too many and I can't find my way back, then I have to make a U-turn and retrace my steps to where the turn is supposed to be made. But if I'm sitting in my car, listen, if I'm sitting in my car and the motor is running and I'm not applying the gas and I'm not checking and I'm not moving forward, it's not in gear, it's sitting there in park. I don't care how long that motor runs. I can run out of gas if it runs long enough. But I won't get where I'm going because I will not put it in gear. You must put it in gear and apply the gas to go somewhere. So sometimes sitting still can be just as bad as disobeying God. When God tells you to do something, get in gear. Whatever you do, prayerfully get in gear. Watch, pray, read God's word, continually consult with God every step of the way so that you don't miss your turn. You don't miss your off ramp. You don't miss your destination. But don't sit in neutral. Don't sit and drive. Waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. You'll run out of gas doing that. Spiritually and practically. You will run out of gas. And you will get nowhere fast. So whatever you're doing for God, start doing something. Start doing something. Whatever you do. And make sure you consult with God's word. Ask him to lead you to scripture. He will tell you what you should do. He will tell you if you should go. And he will tell you if you should wait. I'm in the same position. I have the opportunity to go to full-time prison ministry. But. The dilemma for me is the Lord told me to join the praise and worship team. I understand why, because some of the other members 
with job uh, issues and all of that are having a hard time filling their commitment. So I'm almost filling in the gap. I don't know if this is a permanent stay. I don't know that. But I know that if I join the prison ministry and go there every Sunday, it's a weekly commitment, which means my car has to run, which means I have to trust God for provision for my car, which means I have to trust God for provision for gas money above my budget. Do you hear what I'm saying? Doing that on top of going to the hospital every week, on top of going to church every week. It's like, okay, Lord, there's a lot coming. So do I push, trust you, put my car in gear and call the chaplain and say, I'll be there every Sunday to preach, which is my calling to preach the gospel to the inmates? Or do I sit on my rusty dusty and just do the praise team? Do you see what I'm do you see where I'm getting at? So I understand being in in a quandary when you're trying to follow God's leading. I understand that. Someone just sent me a question asking, do you think I should whatever? Don't ask me, because I'm asking God too. Ask God. I'm just putting it out there. This is a challenge for all of us. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me because I'm in that dilemma as well. I'm in a quandary. I want to serve God. My first and foremost calling is to preach the gospel, Isaiah 61, which is what God called me to the ministry through. But by the same token, months ago, he told me to join the praise, the praise team. Now, if I go to this thing, <laughs> if I go to prison ministry every week, that means I have to get up earlier. That goes against my flesh. Yeah. I also not only have to get up earlier, but I have to drive 30 minutes to the prison in this old clunky car that I'm praying God keeps rolling on desert roads where there's hardly any traffic, where I don't want to ever be stranded. You hear what I'm saying? There's another area I have to trust God. And I have to do this every Sunday, which means when I come out of the prison, am I going to get out soon enough to get to church, to jump up into the praise team and sing there as well? Or do I exchange prison, uh, the church for the prison and just do the prison? See, I don't know. That's what I'm asking God for. So I know some of you have questions about your vocation, about your job situation, about your calling, your giftings, your callings, how to serve God, how far to go with the people you're ministering to, when to drop off, when to let go and let God. All of this is a big question mark. Whatever you choose to do, it has to be by faith that you think you're following God and covered by prayer. Lord, if I'm going in the wrong direction, shut it down. Shut it down before I mess up what I'm already in. You've got to cover all bases in this prayer. And you've got to seek God. I've got to seek God more myself. We've got to seek God because he's the one that's in control. He knows our destiny. He knows our calling. So there are times when we find ourselves in a dilemma, in a quandary, in one big question mark. What? When? How? Where? <laughs> yeah. That's when we have to really go to God. Because if he called you to it, I heard a woman say something and it sticks with me to this day and I borrowed it and, and it's mine now. <laughs> she said, if it's God's will, 
It's God's bill. So I've got to live according to that as well. We must seek first the kingdom of God. Woo! I'm preaching to myself. And all those other things will be added. If we're going to serve God, we cannot worry about what he's going to do for us. We cannot worry. Is God going to make a way? If it's God's will, it's God's bill. He will make a way. He'll make a way where there is no way. Every time I've been stranded in my car, the Lord made sure I wasn't stranded. He made sure that help was right there. My history tells me how faithful God is. God is more faithful than AAA. He's more on time than AAA. And I don't have to pay for God to come to my rescue. You hear what I'm saying? So we all have to be mindful. God, forgive me for doubting you. We have to be mindful. I'm sorry, you guys. Sometimes I think about making $900 a month and my mind limits me from seeing all of God's possibilities. So while I'm trying to talk to you, the word is steadily hitting me in my face right now. And I know God is telling me to trust him. It's always God's will to serve, but I know there's a thing called the fullness of time. And I'm waiting on God's fullness of time. Oh, I hope you can understand me through my tears because I can barely talk when I cry. But I know that when God wants us to do something, we have to trust him to make a way to get it done. One of my friends went to a gas station. He didn't have any money. The Lord had opened the door for him to preach at a church. He and his wife and his two sons, his three sons, were, were in the car. And he struggled and battled with it because he didn't have the gas money to get him home. And he didn't know if he had enough to get him to the church. And he was so close to E, it was really taking a chance. And he he. He just felt like I need to do this by faith. I gave my word. I need to trust God to get me there. And he said, as he drove, his needle went so close to E, he knew he would not make it to the church. So as he was driving, he saw the Lord caught his attention to a gas station. And he pulled over to the gas station. And he sat there and he said, Lord, I don't have money to get gas. So what am I going to do? And a man came up to him and knocked on the window. And he thought it was somebody getting ready to ask for money. And he was going to say, sorry, I don't have any money. But the man was well dressed. And he, won, you know, he opened his door and the guy said, uh, don't think I'm being strange or anything, but God just told me to give you this money. Just like that. He didn't miss no more than maybe one or two signal lights sitting there. The man gave him enough money to put in a gas tank to get to the church and all the way back home and somewhere else on top of that. He made it on time to the church service, preached the gospel. And then they blessed him with an honorarium for preaching the word. And he left with money in his pocket because the church blessed him on top of that. So 
a lot of times when we worry about serving God, we worry about going to school, we worry about changing jobs, we worry about uh, ministering to people out of our pockets, we worry about transitioning from one field to another field, going back to school, doing whatever we need to do, and we're thinking, but Lord, I don't have the money. God's got his hand on us, you guys. He's got his hand on us. He's got his hand on our destinies. And he will take better care of us than he does the sparrows. He'll take better care of us than the lilies of the field. We don't have to worry and struggle. We must believe and seek and trust God. I must do it as well as you. And I feel like we're all in this stage of transition in our lives. And we have no idea what God has in store for us, how God's going to use us. If God tells you he wants you to go to school and become a doctor, just do it. Trust God for the for the uh trust God for the scholarships. Some of you may be looking at, at the medical field. Some of you may be looking at at uh whatever field you're looking at, psychiatry, you may be looking at psychology, you may be looking, I've always wanted to be a, a prison chaplain. I've always wanted to do that, and I thought of going to college for psychology. But the thing I keep being nudged to is prison. So what the the point is, I've done prison ministry for years. So that's 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 very comfortable for me. I know that that is my outreach calling. God already showed me that years and years ago, decades ago. But and I've served in it for over a decade. But now I'm in a transitional stage like many of you with a calling on your life, seeking God for what he wants us to do right here, right now. And sometimes we just have to take a step of faith. And the step of faith may bring the provision. The provision may not come until you've stepped in. The provision for deliverance for Israel didn't come until they stepped in and they and Moses led them across that sea. Joshua led them. When Joshua led them, the water didn't part until the priests stepped into the water and got the bottom of their garments wet. That's when the water parted. And some of us have to step in before we see the proof that this is really the way that God said this is the way, walk ye in it. Sometimes we have to walk in it before we get proof that this is the way. So whatever you do, prayerfully do it, do it by faith. And I can't read these right now, I will afterwards, but do it by faith. Whatever you do, do it by faith, you guys. And God will direct your path, but you have to ask him every step of the way, Lord, don't let me make a wrong turn. Lord, stop me if I'm going ahead of schedule. Anything. But don't get your feelings hurt if he stops you. Trust that that's God. Do you hear what I'm saying? When God leads you, sometimes, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. It's going to sound kind of hairy to some of you. But relationship allows for this because I know God's heart for me. Sometimes God gets on my nerves. <laughs> because he doesn't make things obvious and it's frustrating trying to feel him out and he plays hide and seek with us sometimes he hides we seek <laughs> and i know he does it with a smile on his face when we continue to seek but some of us get frustrated because we don't get an answer in neon lights and we sit and stop seeking. Don't do that. Keep seeking. 
Keep asking. Keep moving. Keep trusting. And God will get you where you need to be. By any means necessary, he will make a way where there is no way for you to reach your destination. God bless you.